Hey guys, Omni here. We are back for episode five, part five, the penultimate episode of Obi-Wan Kenobi, the series. In the previous episode, Leia has been taken to Nur to Fortress Inquisitorius, and Obi-Wan and Tyla make a daring rescue as Obi-Wan pulls a Cal Kestis and gets his way inside the fortress and makes a cunning escape as he finally starts getting down and deep back into the force, back into his connection, slowly reacquiring some of those abilities. Um, I tried to get this out during the reaction last week, but I, I, I didn't, I don't think I actually got the whole thing out there. What it reminded me of was something that kind of clicked during this uh, that last episode is this 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 season so far kind of feels like one of those video games where you know you pick back up and you where you start off the video game and you've lost all of your abilities from the previous one and you gotta start getting back into the groove and getting a lot of those powers back kind of like God of War it definitely kind of reminded me of that as I was going through it but I kind of struggled to actually express that. It feels like we're finally getting back into the swing of things, similar to how things were in Jedi Fallen Order. Obviously, Cal had previously had these abilities, but he'd been so traumatized, he'd been cut off from a lot of them, so he had to kind of rework his way through it all, as Obi-Wan was actually doing some Force exercises on the way there, knowing this is it. He's going to have to dive back into it. He's going to have to become obi-wan once again not just ben he's gonna have to become obi-wan once again and he does man he does it was a fun episode uh, but a tracker has been placed on leia's droid and now they are following after obi leia and tala to the path so that they can shut down kill two birds with one stone to capture obi-wan leia and take out this jedi underground railroad all at once so we'll see how things go guys but we're gonna go ahead and jump into this so if you want to see the full-length reaction of this episode make sure to check that out over on patreon or if you become a member of the channel it gets you access to that as well as in watch along format so you just sync up your own footage with the time codes you can see my reaction to the entire episode you get the same thing for all the other shows we cover here on the channel as well a bunch of exclusive movie reactions where you guys actually get to help vote on what we add to that list every month Tick Tick Boom was last month's winner. I'm about to post out the poll for the new one today. So keep an eye out for that. We also have monthly Q&As, behind the scenes footage. I'm trying to make it worth your while since you guys are going out of your way to support the channel. But of course, I know not everybody can do that. And a simple way you can help us out is by liking, coming, subscribing, sharing these videos, because that really does go a long way with helping us with YouTube and the promotions and the algorithm and all that jazz. And if you're part of that 67% of people that are watching the channel, you're not subscribed, maybe you're just tuning in for the first time today, if you enjoyed this reaction, maybe you'll stick around. Maybe you'll leave a like. Maybe you'll hit that button at the end. I'd really appreciate it. With that all said and down the way, guys, let's hop into episode five. Here we go. There are certain scenes in the fictional series that some viewers may find upsetting. Wow. Okay. We got a discretionary warning on this episode. That's different. I don't think we've had one of those in one of these Star Wars shows before. Oh, whoa! Yeah, there you are. I was beginning to think you weren't coming, Master. Good. <laughs> Dude! Are you ready? Are you? Then let's begin. I... I... I can't believe this is happening, man. This is awesome. Holy shit. Ah. Uh, damn, that tease. That was cool, though. That confirms my suspicions there. He's uh, reflecting. Reinforces what Hayden was said in, in uh, that interview this week, too. The tracker worked. He's arriving on Jabim as we speak. Mm, yep. You have done well, Neil. Grand Inquisitor. Haja. Oh, wow. But now I know what it feels like being a real Jedi. <laughs> it's not easy. This place is a good business opportunity, though. <laughs> that transport, I need to get her back to Alderaan. Once we get all these people out of here, I'll do whatever you want. They've been waiting for months. We used an old trade route to get them out, but the window's closing. We held it to help you get the kid. We only have a few hours. 
We'll do whatever we can to help. The itch, man, it's coming back. Dude. Oh, no. Oh, wow. What's happening? The, the controls aren't responding. The Imperial destroyer just arrived in orbit above us. She must have tracked us. It's not her, it's Vader. He'll attack next. He hasn't the patience for a siege. <laughs> he knows. Dude. Go to aggressive Anakin. A Jedi's goal is to defend life, not take it. Mercy doesn't defeat an enemy, Master. Dude, this is giving me chills. The Empire will attack soon. If we try and fight them, we will not survive. But we do not need to fight them. We just need to hold them off. How much time do you need to override the doors? Three, four hours. You have one. General Kenobi is coming out. If we defend our position together, by the time they get inside, we'll be gone. Did you try going in the vents to see what's going on? I'm a little too big to be crawling around in the vent. I'm going to need a ladder. Oh, <laughs> little leader Leia. Get her a ladder. Roger, will you keep your eye on her? I am not a babysitter, Ben. I have to go. It's your moment of truth, man. I know we said no communication, but your silence worries me. If I don't hear from you soon, I'll head to Tatooine. Owen will need help with the boy. Aww. I pray you're safe, Obi-Wan. That's so good of him, man. You know, I was following orders on Gorel. People not paying their way, taxes for the cause. They lied. We gathered them up. I didn't know who they were. I didn't know what the Inquisitors would do. Fourteen people died and six of them were children. And I couldn't do anything to help them. So now I do this. One for everyone I get through. You're right, Ben. Some things you can't forget, but you can fight to make them better. I like her a lot, dude. <laughs> I don't know how long it's gonna hold. We got a plan B here? We're going to have to slow them down. Tell the Inquisitor I want to talk. You knew who Vader was. Vader would have kept that hidden unless... She was at the temple. That's how you knew. You saw him. Stop. Anakin killed the others. That's enough. He killed the other younglings, enough. but somehow you... Enough! Ooh. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I thought he was there to help us. I tried to help them, but I couldn't. I was too weak. When he left, I played dead, hid with the bodies, felt them go cold. They were the only family I knew. And he slaughtered them. You're not serving him, are you? You're hunting him. I knew it! Where were you while he was killing my friends? He was your Padawan. Why didn't you stop him? Why didn't you save us? Oh. Yo. He said it was a red breaker. Red. I know what he said. <laughs> Yo, dude. Get carried. Oh. She's going to close the door. The Grand Inquisitor has breached the walls. We shall have him soon. Tell her to stand down. Kenobi is already ours. Mm. No way out, Master. Admit 
your beatness. Damn. The way they're playing these back and forth. Gotcha. Look out for will you? If you want to tell me, are you going to fight without a weapon? There are other ways to fight. Damn. Wow, what's the play? See, Anakin just wants him to admit it. I l love that, too. Again, reinforcing that, that co Hayden comment. He wants this to be a fight. He wants to prove that he's better. You're not bringing him to me. I am bringing him to you. Mm. There are families back there. Children. Are you going to let him do it again? What he did to you. What makes you think he won't see it coming? Because all he'll see is me. <laughs> That's not wrong. He is the most tunnel vision out of any Jedi ever. Pocket sand. <laughs> Your need for victory, Anakin, it blinds you. Man, he just wants to be acknowledged so badly. Even all the way up to A New Hope, he just doesn't acknowledge him. can't find out about it <laughs> so like what's gonna happen there with that oh yo <laughs> Obi's not on that ship though oh m holy shit <laughs> Nice. You're a great warrior, Anakin. But you'll need to prove yourself as your undoing until you overcome it. A Padawan you will still be. Dude, he's not even going to pull out his saber, is he? Damn. Oh, oh yeah, I completely forgot it was a staff. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> oh. Damn, man. Oh. He's not even going to use his. Oh! Oh, no. Oh, that was... Did you really believe I did not? 
not see it, youngling. You are of no further you. And there he is. Revenge does wonders for the will to live, don't you think? Your rage was useful. Now it is tiresome. We will leave you where we found you. In the gutter where you belong. Damn. Oh, she's going to learn what Obi-Wan's been defending. Something's wrong. All right, man. That was my favorite episode. Easy so far, man. That was so good. A lot of fun. Dark as shit, though. We actually... Ah, it was in quick flickers, but we actually had to see Anakin swipe through some younglings. And that enters cut between Reva taking the blade as an adult and taking the blade as a child was uh, just really well done. Just like she did then, she's still clinging to life now. Um, and they know it. They know she's alive. Um, but they want her to feel powerless, useless, so they're just they're more than fine letting her go. They're not at all concerned with her, though. I would imagine, you know, they would have, finished off any <laughs> force sensitive person that they would leave out there. But I get that it was more of a, a blow to her soul than anything after that, R giving her the same wound that she gave the grand inquisitor. That reveal too was nice. Vader was in on her plan the entire time, or at least had a sense of it that there was this bubbling betrayal underneath the surface and he was playing it. And I like that whole thing with Vader in this, with Anakin, the flashbacks to this chess match. Showing Anakin's rashness, his want to prove himself, his want to best his opponents, his want to be acknowledged, which is, it's always been his thing, especially from episode two onward. We saw it heavily in episode two. We saw it even more in episode three. That, like being on the council and being denied the rank of master, you know, all these little things throughout that and the conversation between him and Padme on Coruscant in episode two. Like it was all that want of being acknowledged for his growth and his abilities, but every time he's his own enemy, his desire to be the best, his desire to win has always been something that holds him back from the greater picture. And I like how they paralleled that because even now, and this is something that Hayden had said um, in reference to the episode where, um, episode three, when he confronts Obi-Wan, drags him through the fire, he he's disappointed. Like, because he's still got that itch. He's still got that want. He Last time he met Obi-Wan, he still got beat. He wants to prove he's gotten better. He wants to prove to his master once and for all that He's been bested. He wants him to admit it. He wants him to feel it. And when he finds Obi-Wan in that situation, it's just, he's not there. He's just, there's no reward in beating this helpless man. There's no acknowledgement in beating this uh, weakened Jedi. There's nothing that can satiate that itch. So he lets him go. And who knows? He may have even let him go to Nur in order to kind of scratch that itch. He was like, okay, you're not you're not okay now. Maybe we'll build you back up the strength. It's a total Goku moment, but if Goku was psychotic, which I don't know, sometimes he is. Just a different kind of psychotic where he's like, there's no reward to him if he beats this ghost, this thing that's been haunting him all his life. Jedi life. All of his force user life has been his master and his acknowledgement. There's no, there's no itch that, there's no scratch that's going to itch that. And unless he's back to strength 
And I don't know that he was knowingly doing that with Nerd, but that would be a nice little fun detail to allow that to happen. Oh, it's just like, I don't know. I really love that, but especially with the psychology of the battle that they intersparse between this episode as he's playing this chess match with Obi-Wan, trying to attack him both mentally and uh, physically during the situation. Reva being put in charge, another strategic move by Vader. You could just kind of tell in the way that he kind of played everything very close to his chest. Same with her, and I like it. I finally, I'm, I'm glad we finally got the payoff for character a little bit, even though she's not completely down and out right now. Um, that it's it's exactly what we said. I said um, they gave it away in the posters. There's little things and nuggets throughout the episodes that hinted towards this direction, and I I like I like the way it paid off, especially once the facade kind of got dropped a little bit because it does feel like at times she's putting on an act and in a way she is. She's become this person out, out of necessity, out of a want for revenge. And I like it. I like that. I wish we could have got a little bit more of it up until this point, but I do like what they did with it here because it, I mean, for anybody that wasn't expecting it, there's your twist. Um, and that fight between her and Vader if you could even call it that, man. He uh, he made her look like the youngling she still was. And when he walked away and still called her a youngling, oh, man, that's got to cut deep. Pun intended. I don't know. I really like that. Especially breaking her uh, staff into the two pieces and not even, not even once igniting his lightsaber. Beating her with her own. And just ripping her apart with it man just showing the 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 expanse between their skills and i think we'll have like a mall situation here you know the communicator from bail got left behind so she was able to hear scrambled bits of what's going on so i'm sure she'll go to tatooine maybe she'll maybe that's where she'll go she'll learn the truth and maybe there is somebody else that will be able to do this down the line find peace and pass or maybe she'll survive and join the rebellion from this point forward i don't know it's a good question i'm not too sure but their hyperdrive is not working right now and they're not getting away so obi-wan's gonna have to do something and we haven't had him i think i think especially after this defending this base becoming the general again we saw in episode four this stepping back into form with him you know, getting back into the fight, realizing that there are people out there that still need help. And this is him kind of getting that resolve back. We saw that a little bit in the previous episode, and we're seeing it where he takes full control here. Um, Kamal's coming back. Um, Haja coming back into play and kind of becoming part of this was fun as well. As well as Leia kind of coming into the plot as well to help them with uh, getting everything in the vents taken care of because she's small enough to go up there. Um, I don't know, man. Everything kind of came together in this episode. Tala's sacrifice. I just it was a it was a very strong mix of like Rogue One vibes and early um, like Revenge of the Sith stuff, man. I, I really I really enjoyed this episode, man. And just the fact that the the Grand Inquisitor was on the mend this whole time and it was just something they were kind of keeping secret while they used. Reva for their, their own means, her own ambitions, her own want to get this revenge on Anakin. I thought that was really well done. I thought that was a really good payoff for everything up until this point. I think the one minor thing I'm like, and I, I have a justification for it, it's just in the moment it feels a little weird. Um, when he, Vader, just rips that ship down. Oh, that was so cool. The animation was a little wonky on the ship itself, but still seeing him pull that ship back down and just shred it apart was cool. Um, but then not being able to sense the one behind it as it lifts and gets away from the distraction um, was a little, a little jarring. But again, that plays to exactly what Obi-Wan has been saying this entire time. It's just visually and narratively speaking, it kind of feels a little weird. But in universe, it makes sense. He's blinded. He's tunnel vision. He's focused. He's honed in on what he sees. Like I mentioned in the reaction, out of every Jedi, 
that has been, he has the most tunnel vision out of everyone. Once he's focused in on a goal, once he's focused in on something, he's easily honed in and he ignores everything else around him. Um, and that's kind of what happened there. Um, but I, I, yeah, they, they got away, but they haven't got away for long. They have not completely, um, made their escape. And I'm wondering how they're going to make this, make it out of this man, really. Um, the whole little scene between Obi-Wan and Reva connecting through the door as he pieces it together, all the things we've kind of been speculating and their little like back and forth. He was like, where were you? He was your Padawan. He was like, all these things that we had talked about before. Uh, just, it's just rewarding, man, to just kind of have all that kind of said, even though I don't feel like everything needs to be spelled out. I think there is room to infer things and to kind of let this visual and physical body language of the story kind of play things out as well. And I think it did do a pretty decent job of that, though there are some things here and there that um, I think were a little too vague. But I, I do like what they did with that whole scene, um, by diving into her backstory, getting those flashes of Anakin attacking the temple, and those flashes of Obi-Wan and that tr sparring match with uh Obi-Wan and Anakin. We had a firefight. We had losses. We had sacrifices. We had just some good action, man. I really I really did really like this episode overall. Like like I said, I like this se season so far. I It's got its flaws, but I enjoy it. I'm having fun with it. There's not been an episode that I haven't had some semblance of joy with. I've really enjoyed the whole interaction. Something short might be a little silly, but that's Star Wars, man. It's always been that way. It doesn't detract from me for the enjoyment overall. I mean, I like the prequels, and those are the most flawed things in the entire uh, franchise when it comes to structural integrity. But I, I love them, man. And I like what they're doing with this. I like how we're in interconnecting who Anakin is in the suit to where... As long as Obi-Wan's out there, man, and he's on Anakin's mind, Anakin is in that suit. He is not Vader. And I love that. And this adds just a little more context to their encounter in A New Hope where he's still trying to get some acknowledgement from him. Even then, you know, he's like... You know, when I left you, I was but the learner. Now I am the master. And he's like, only a master of evil, Darth. And it's just like, even then, will not acknowledge him. Because there's still things he doesn't know. There's still things that he's oblivious to. And that's when he was like, oh, man, you can strike me down. I'll become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. And he does. And what happens? It backfires. Everything is just like showing just the gaps in Anakin's armor his entire life. Um, until he's whole again by the end. very, very end. Able to put his ego aside for somebody else, for anybody else. And I don't know. I like it. I like what they're doing with it. I have no idea what's going to happen in the finale. I imagine we will finally have Obi-Wan face off with Vader directly because we still have to kind of pay homage to that whole, uh, again, another new hope line. But we'll get to that. The Obi-Wan returned to Tatooine with his resolve intact and strengthened for when Maul shows up and gets molly right in the fucking ass. Very curious to see how this goes, man. But I, I enjoyed this episode. So guys, what do you think of this episode? What do you think about where it's going? What do you think is going to happen in the final episode? Sound off the comments. Let me know your thoughts down below. We'll carry on the conversation after the video. Feel free to join us in our Discord. We can talk about it there as well. Links to that on all my socials are in the description box below. If you want to see the full-length reaction, remember it's on Patreon or if you become a member of the channel, it gets you access as well. And speaking of, before we go, I want to shout out our channel legends, Fanny Sharon, Ryan, Karen, Jason Coleman, Philly Vane, Yori, Corey Scott, Margaret Grace, Mary Bradley, Melita, Robert Anguiano, and Cal Kestis Nation. Thank you guys so much, as always, for your continued support. But that's it for this video, guys, and I'll see you all next week for the finale of Obi-Wan Kenobi. May the Force be with you, always. Take care, everybody.